My goal was to be national by the time I was 25. Because I knew the vision was too big or too weird or too creative for some people to understand. And I was like, I can't Jesus, thank you. No one has to understand your vision except for you. And I tried a few things, I hit walls, but I wasn't afraid to step back, evaluate, and adapt. I was lugging my little carry out through New York. My back was hurting. People were just stepping on my shoes and it was just a hot mess. When can you start? I was like, tomorrow. All right, guys. Hey, y'all at Zuri Hall. Um, it is so hot. Welcome back to my channel. I feel like I'm in my Oprah chair right now. Like story time with Zuri. But it kind of is because I'm excited for this one. This is something a lot of people have been asking about. Um, and I'm kind of like, uh, go back to my throwback videos, but I think it's time for an update. So basically, this is my career tag 2.0, career story, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is just sort of where I am right now and how I got here. Um, just so that you guys know, I did do a career tag um, quite a, like a few years ago. I was still in Dallas, Texas in local news the last time that I did like my career story. And... Basically, it's been like a long, crazy journey since then. So I was in Dallas like probably three years ago, three or four. It seems like so much longer because so much has happened. But um, I'm just going to start from, I'm going to speed through the local news stuff and then I'm going to cover everything since then. So if you want the full, the full, I can't say that right. I think it's my Ohio accent. If you want the full story the full local news story then you should go click that i'll put a link in the description box for the original uh career tag or career story and then you can catch up from there okay so basically as you guys may or may not know i am a tv host and i work for e news oh my god i know it's like my dream job it has been for so long and it's just like the holy grail of entertainment news so i'm so proud and happy to be here it's freaking great it's awesome because I've been working really hard and I started very early on so basically I got my start I graduated from university and in Ohio I just gotta do it. oh wait oh, yes finally some people are starting to do it uh, back <laughs> you guys are starting to get it so um, I graduated from Ohio State I was on a full ride there so I was on an academic scholarship um, check out my college life videos also and like a month before I was about to graduate, I had no idea what I was going to do. Again, I'm giving you the short version of all of the local TV years. So I had no idea what I was going to do. And I found, I stumbled upon this online advertisement saying there was this audition to be the face of this next, of this local TV show. Um, so I was like, I don't know what that is, but I want to do it because I need a job. Oh my God. And I didn't want to just like be doing what I was doing, which is working a great job, but at the front desk, like on campus, just like a work study position, like as a student. And I knew I wanted to be in entertainment. I wanted it so badly. And this was just next door in Indiana. I was like, what? I don't have to pack up and risk it all in LA or New York. So I was intrigued, had no idea what it was. Long story short, I drove up from Columbus to Indianapolis in my little 99 Four Tours Hoopty. Uh, the air conditioning didn't work, it was hot. But I made it and I auditioned along with a few hundred other people um, and slowly but surely they were eliminating people and um, they announced the top five live on air so they brought us all to the station and I had the five of us sitting there and then they were like and the winner is and I brought my best friend one of my best friends Shalisa uh, hi Lise, um, to sort of have someone to support me because I was the only one who came from Ohio everyone else was local from Indiana and they were like, the winner is Zuri Hall, and I was like, oh my god! And it was amazing! And I didn't realize it then, but that was truly like the start of this amazing career that I've had. And I am so, 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 so grateful to Indianapolis, to the station I was at, to that competition, to everyone I worked with for that opportunity. Because although I do have faith that it would have happened one way or another, that's just my faith in who I am and what I'm capable of. This is the way it happened and so that's where that gratitude goes i didn't even think about tv hosting as a career path until i became one and so i learned to shoot i learned to edit i learned to produce 
I was growing in myself. I will admit, this is one thing I may not have mentioned in the first career story, but I was young. So, you know, I'm like 21, 22 maybe at this point. I was 21 when I got the job, I think 22, um, about a month into it. And so I feel like I was used to campus life coming and going when I wanted and things would get done but when I wanted. I wasn't used to working on deadlines. Sure, I had homework and exams and stuff like that, but it's different when, um, it's not just you on the line. You're a part of a greater effort, a greater team. So I will admit I had to adjust to that and that was difficult for me at first because I was so used to just like doing everything on my own schedule. So I had to learn to be accountable and to get more organized. I was always so disorganized like my whole life. I still am. If you saw it to the left or the right, you'd be like, oh my God, girl. I had to work on that. So that was, those were growing pains for me. I learned how to keep a schedule. I love, I live for my planner now. I, as soon as something happens, I write it down in my um, calendar. But back then, I was like, oh, it's in my head. And then of course it wouldn't be a week later when I was supposed to be somewhere. So slowly but surely, I was figuring out that this is something I loved. It was something I was good at. It felt good to be on camera and then be off camera and people be like, oh, your personality is this or that, or you were made for this, you should keep doing it. And I was unsure of myself a little bit. I always knew I wanted to be an entertainer. I had grown up on the stage doing commercials, etc. But hosting, this was something new for me. So to get that validation was really awesome. And those growing pains really helped prepare me for a place where like, they weren't going to be playing that. So, oh, one thing I forgot to mention very quickly, when I was in Indianapolis, and you guys should check out this awesome article. I love Nicole Kane. You guys may have known her formerly as Nicole Bitchy. She has an amazing lifestyle site called exonicole.com right now. And they did a profile piece on me and my story and sort of like the idea of like betting on yourself. When I was in Indianapolis, I wanted to win an Emmy. I wanted to, it was a regional Emmy in the category was outstanding talent host and I just felt like I could do it and so I ended up putting up my own money to be considered for the nomination and this is back when I was like broke right so I was pinching pennies I didn't have a lot of money my hours weren't full time so it was like a I was probably working around 20 to 25 hours a week and then emceeing um and the, the station only has so much money that they allot to like nominations, but I really wanted to be considered for a nomination. I thought I could, if not win, at least get nominated. So I put my own money up just to be considered. It doesn't mean you're going to get nominated. That's just so they take you seriously enough to look at your work. And then I ended up getting nominated, and then I ended up winning, which I did not expect. I know people say, oh my god, I didn't expect it, but I'm ready for my close-up. I did not expect this at all. Like I didn't even, none of my family came. I didn't invite any of them because I just didn't want to like lose in front of them. And then I freaking won and it was awesome. And that's when I knew, that's what validated like I should be doing this. You know, I was up against some amazing people, some who had been in the business and respected so, such good talents for years in that market. Which is why I was like, no, this is my first year in hosting and TV. I'm learning as I go. It hasn't even, it may have just been a year at that point, but I did it and then I won. And that's when I was like, you know what, this, I, this is for me. Like, I think this is a really good sign that um, I could be good at this, that I could be really good at this. Basically after that, I ended up getting um, a small um, local agent and we were working together loosely. I was emceeing for the Indiana Pacers for the NBA team. And then I got a job offer to co-host a local lifestyle show back in Ohio. So I moved back to my home state, um, not in Toledo though. And then I was there co-hosting and producing a live show every day, Monday through Friday for an hour. So it was a smaller market, but that's sort of how local TV works. You sometimes have to start in a very small market and then work your way up to the big market. A market means a ton, how many people are watching, right? So I started in the number 25 market, Indianapolis. That was a big deal. I didn't realize it then because I was unfamiliar, again, with sort of local TV and how it worked. But um, I just was lucky enough to win that competition and be thrown into that market. Um, normally people start in like the 60s or 70s or number 80, 90, 100 markets. It goes on forever until you're in the middle of nowhere. Um, 
And then I went down the market so that I could get this opportunity to host a live show every day. That was a big deal. The stuff I was doing in Indy wasn't live. So I went down to market number 62, I think, to have that opportunity and prove that I could host a live show. Um, and then that's what I did. I did that for a year and then things, it started to snowball. And it's one of those things where when you realize you're walking in your purpose and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, nothing can stop you. If you are willing to meet the universe halfway, if you put in your work, it's like I personally, being a believer, feel like God carried me the rest of the way. You know what I mean? Like if I put in my work, he was like, all right, here we go. Get ready for liftoff. And that's just sort of how it felt. So I spent a year in the market number 62 and then I signed a contract to move to market number five. That was huge for me. I was so excited. I moved to Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. So I was living in Dallas, but I was anchoring the evening news to broadcast at five o'clock and nine o'clock, plus doing the weather wall. Not a meteorologist, but I was the weather girl. <laughs> and I was doing that every single day. So I was creating the weather maps, creating the forecasts based on data that I was pulling from obviously actual meteorologists and all of this stuff. And then I was also anchoring the five o'clock news and the nine o'clock every single day. And it was awesome. It was hard, it was hard news, period. So it was heavy, death, destruction, crime, etc. cetera, um, world news, just whatever was going on. It was your typical newscast before a younger audience and that's why it was exciting to me. I was finally for the first time meeting people who were my age, who were creative, who were hardworking because that's what got them to this number five market, but um, who also love to act and to sing and to experiment creatively. So it was really cool. I met some really awesome creative people, some of whom I am still friends with today, and it was great. But just when I was like, I can settle into Dallas for a little while, fate came a knocking again. And long story short, <laughs> all my long stories short are still long stories. Um, I found out about an opportunity to go to Fuse TV. My goal was to be national by the time I was 25. I didn't know how, I didn't know what exactly that meant. All I knew was that I wanted you to be able to turn on your TV, no matter where in America you were, and see my face by the time I was 25. So that was always my goal from the time I got into it back in Indianapolis. And I didn't know how it was gonna happen, but I, anytime anyone asked, I unapologetically put it out there. That was a goal, that was a goal. Um, and then it, the moment came where it could happen. I was 24, I think. Oop, camera cut off. So anyways, fast forwarding back to Fuse. Um, I got wind that Fuse TV was hiring. I wanted to be national by 25. I was in Dallas and I loved it. I wasn't just comfortable, I was happy. There, you know, there's always things you could do differently. I wish I could be a little more creative. They let us experiment a lot, which was great, and be creative, but I wanted, you know, just to be in a city period or a space um, that just was thriving with more creatives. And I knew at the end of the day, I was gonna have to end up in LA or New York. So I found out about Fuse and long story short, we submitted like my resume and my headshot or whatever, right? And then didn't hear anything back. Oh, they were like, oh, she's great, we love her. But then we never heard anything. And I was like, I want this, I really want this. I let a few weeks go by and I just wouldn't let it go. And I went online and I started Googling and searching and LinkedIn and whatever else. And I stumbled across this girl's contact info. Didn't know who she was from Adam, but she worked for Fuse. And so I met randomly, like, you know how you cold call? I cold emailed and was like, hey, well, not this, this. Hey, you don't know me, but this is my real, this is what I do, this is what I want. I sent it off. Ooh, and I tell you, God bless her. She forwarded, along, forwarded it along to her boss, who ended up being my future boss. He saw me, he liked my reel. They flew me out to New York City. For 24 hours, I came, I auditioned. I was lugging my little carry-on through New York. My back was hurting, people were just stepping on my shoes, and it was just a hot mess. But I was used to the grind at that point. I've been doing it since high school living in New York, sleeping on floors, grinding in Atlanta, sleeping on couches. So I've been doing that for years. I didn't I didn't mind it and I've always been willing to risk. Like big risk, big reward is my motto. Um, so I went there, I auditioned and there was like other girls in there and they were like cocky and they were confident and I would like try to smile or be nice because I was nervous and they would just like look at you and like go back into the group and I was like oh my god these girls are so 
confident, like, there's no way I'm gonna get this job because this chick and this chick and this chick, they're all sitting here like they know they've got it. And clearly they can't all get it, but one of them must because of the way they're acting, right? And I went in there and I did my thing. I wrote a music, an essay on the state of music and writing was always my strength, so I felt like I knew I had that in the bag. I interviewed, I met with people, I did a read, a quick read um, in the studio and that was it. I went back to Dallas, didn't think anything of it. Long story short, they were like, we like you, we want to try you on air for a week. They flew me back out, I co-hosted for a week as a guest host, and then they offered me the contract. And I was like, oh my god, Jesus, thank you, and boom, I was national by 25. And it just felt so good. Not like in a sense of like proving anyone wrong. So many people just supported me. It wasn't like I had like haters or anything like that sense. Um, at least not ones who were bold enough to tell me to my face. But just like I did it to my, for myself. And so I picked up, I moved from Dallas, a place I loved, to New York for a bigger opportunity. And it was a bigger risk, but that's like the prime example to me of never getting too comfortable, right? Like it's so easy to get complacent. I like this space I'm in, but are you growing if you're comfortable? You know, it's like with track and field, which I hate, I just hate working out and all that stuff. But like sports, if you are doing a workout and it's no longer hard for you, it's like breathing or like moving and it's just whatever, are you growing? Are those muscles gonna build? And that's how I look at my career. And it was like, I loved Dallas. And I could have been there forever easily. I could have gotten married there, had the kids there, settled down. I really liked it, but I was comfortable. And I knew how much more I wanted for myself. And I knew if I got too comfortable, I'd convince myself that that's all I ever wanted when I knew I wanted so much more. So even though I loved it, I packed up. It was a hard choice and I moved to New York. And I worked at Fuse TV for just under a year. And then I signed with an amazing agent who I still work with today. I love her, she's awesome. And then she got me sort of talking to MTV. Long story short, I met with the execs at MTV and they, and then I didn't hear anything. And I was like, okay, that's cool. It was just like a meet and greet. And then randomly, like three weeks later, it was just a call, they want to sign you. And I was like, what? Oh my God, like out of nowhere. It went from just like, oh, that was a great meeting. They really liked you to silence to when can you start? I was like, tomorrow. <laughs> so no, it took a little bit more time than that. But then I ended up moving over to MTV and I was there for a year. It was an awesome experience. I made some really great work friends. That's when I started working on um, the challenge after shows, hosting those after shows, which um, a lot of you guys have tweeted me during and like commented under my videos that you've seen me hosting. So that was a really awesome time. I loved, loved, loved uh, the challenge family. They're so much fun. And then I also did work on MTV too. I would do stuff on VH1. I would um, guest host with Nick Lachey when he was hosting Big Morning Buzz. And then I would also do a show, Charlemagne's show, Charlemagne the God. You guys oh, may have heard me on his podcast a time or two. Whew. My mom listens to those podcasts. No bueno. Um, but I would go on his podcast, but I met him through working with him on his new show, Uncommon Sin. Um, during my time, by the way, at Fuse, I got the opportunity to guest host Fashion Police on E! with, wait for it, the legendary Joan Rivers. What? What? The legendary Joan Rivers. Oh my god, it didn't even hit me until after I got back to New York what had just happened to me. But long story short, <laughs> um, I flew out, they flew me out to LA and I guest hosted. That was it, you know? Julia was out for the day or doing whatever. And so they just sometimes have someone fill the chair. They have like celebrities come in, they have random guests. And so that week I got to fill in. And it was so awesome working with Joan. She was amazing, so sweet to me. I didn't have a glam squad. They assumed that I did, but I was like, I don't know a glam squad. Mm. But it was the morning I showed up, like, where do I go? Joan was like, where's your glam squad? I was like, I don't have one. <laughs> so she sent her team out of her dressing room. She was like, I'll be fine. Go get this girl's life together. And sent her makeup and, ooh, cut off again. And hairstylist to do my glam for the day. So it was awesome. I got to meet um, the fashion police team, work alongside Joan, which was such an honor. May she rest in peace. It was just a beautiful experience. So that's, I'm, I'm all over the place now. But I did that, came back, finished working with Fuse, 
then went to MTV, and then, like I was saying, my agent was like, there may be an opportunity with E! And I was like, oh my god, that's the holy grail, that's what I wanted for so long. I didn't think the opportunity was going to present itself as early as it did, honestly. So I went out, I flew out to LA, I met with folks, one thing led to another, led to another, led to another, led to another, and it was a slow courtship, and then boom, I got the deal. And I was so nervous, you guys, because I loved the idea of this place for so long. Even after I would signed my contract, I was like, oh, it's not real. Oh, I don't know. Anything can happen. I was just so paranoid because it was just like what I wanted so badly. I was afraid to jinx it until I was like, there. Well, it happened, as you can see, E! News, weeknights, 7 at 11. And uh, I moved to Los Angeles. And that, like I said, was just about a year ago. And as I sort of went on this winding journey, I felt my confidence grow. I felt like um, like I was doing what I was supposed to be doing, which helps my confidence. And like I was finally getting enough experience to help other people, which is why I'm relaunching my website, thealphababe.com. Stay tuned. The revamped version of my lifestyle platform for the ambitious millennial woman. It is where glamour and the grind collide. And a lot of it is inspired by my career journey, but also amazing women, other contributors who are doing really awesome things. And we're just sharing the love, we're spreading the knowledge. So check it out. Um, but that's it, so now I'm here, I'm at E! News. I'm loving every single minute. You gotta follow me to keep up with everything going on there. God is so good, but the truth is like, it's hard, it's very hard, but it is worth it to set your goals, work hard, go after them full speed ahead and unapologetically. I say this all the time, but I'll say it again because I mean it and I can never say it enough. No one has to understand your vision except for you because no one else has to execute it. And I knew always that I wanted this, this life, this sort of career on camera, on stage, entertaining, informing people, communicating, talking to people. And I didn't always know how I'd get there, and I tried a few things, I hit walls, but I wasn't afraid to step back, evaluate, and adapt, you know? I wasn't so set on one idea, but I was set on the big picture. And even when people tried to convince me to stop in Ohio, or Indiana, or Dallas, or New York, even when the little voice inside of me wanted me to stop in Dallas, or New York, I knew what I wanted, I really did, because I had enough quiet time with myself to know that. So even if if or when my family or my friends didn't get it, I got it and that was okay. I was like, it's cool y'all, no bad blood. I didn't even mind because I knew the vision was too big or too weird or too creative for some people to understand, but I got it and that's all that mattered. I just had to say, wait and see, you'll see, just wait. And for a long time, I was out there looking crazy because it hadn't come together yet. And they were like, oh really? I'm still waiting. And I was like, you're right, just give me like another year. Um, but it happened, and here we are. And I still have a long way to go. And after you set one goal, you set another. It's like I got what I wanted, national by 25. E is what I wanted after that. I'm here at E and I love it. And I think the, the idea is just to keep setting goals, to keep pushing yourself and growing. You know, like, I don't ever want to stop growing you know as long as we're breathing we're living we should be growing so that's what i encourage you to do i have talked entirely too long i'm sweating my muscles off um it's hot and my camera keeps turning off because i'm talking forever so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this i hope you can get a little bit more understanding a lot of people think i started on youtube i didn't i love it but i actually just started a youtube channel so i could talk to you guys directly be creative express myself back when I was doing news in Dallas, Texas. That's when I started. So, um, yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you have any questions, anything else you want to see, anything else you'd like me to talk about. Um, and I've got more coming for you soon, all right? Make sure you guys are following me on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter, at Zuri Hall. And stay tuned. Check out thealphababe.com. And that's it. I'm rambling, so I'm going to stop now. I love you guys. Mwah. My goal was to be national by the time I was 25 because I knew the vision was too big or too weird or too creative for some people to understand. And I was like, oh my God, Jesus, thank you. No one has to understand your vision except for you. And I tried a few things, I hit walls, but I wasn't afraid to step back, evaluate.
evaluate and adapt. I was lugging my little carry out through New York. My back was hurting. People were just stepping on my shoes and it was just a hot mess. When can you start? 